For Etude Number 3 by Berm in B flat minor, I recommend trying to feel this as very light and buoyant all the way through the piece. And to me, it feels really good if I play this with the sense that I am uh, playing on a cushion of air the whole time. So all these technical fast notes feel like they're taking place sort of above the ground a little bit with this cushion of air supporting it and carrying it through with the direction of the piece from phrase to phrase. Now, then in the middle of the piece, you can feel a little bit calmer. This is measure 25. I can feel like a little, kind of a little more at ease and relaxed. And then it picks up again and starts to flow with more intensity through to the end. And I think this is a fun etude to play. Um, if you're having fun while playing it, that means you've gotten to a certain point where you uh, can be uh, relaxed and proficient technically. You don't have to stress out about that. That's the goal. Get to the point where you're playing this and it sounds like it's, you're having a lot of fun and enjoying the experience. Now, particular to uh, the preparation of this piece, like always, write in the measure numbers, write in rehearsal letters and big major sections, write in alternate positions. There are a lot of them in this piece, especially at the end. And write in all of your breath marks. Breathing is a challenge in this piece as well. And so you have to get used to where you're going to breathe so that you don't, in the middle of the piece, suddenly ask, oh, am I supposed to breathe here? What do I do now? And that causes doubt and usually will cause some mistakes. So always practice each passage really slowly. Again, you want to feel like you're on this cushion of air and that it's easy as you're working through the difficult passages. Here's measure nine. To me, it feels like I'm playing a long tone that happens to have articulated notes, changing pitch, rhythm, all those kinds of things. So every measure, every phrase that is four to eight bars, you want to start slowly and try and develop that feeling. The slow start will allow you to think about uh, playing the right way versus just thinking about notes and rhythms, which is where you start, you might start to get into the piece too much and not be able to play with freedom. So um, I also like the rigid slide technique that we talked about with the first etude. And so this is real relevant, maybe in measure 13. And then when you go back and play it uh, more up to tempo with a relaxed slide, it should be a little bit easier. And the slide will usually respond better after you've done the really rigid kind of robotic movement. Again, we don't want that to be the goal. You don't want it to have a rigid robotic slide, but by practicing it that way, when you start to relax, your arm still knows exactly where to go for each note. Uh, alternate positions, especially at the end, are gonna come in handy, but other ones throughout the piece, high F and sharp, sharp fourth position when you have G flat and E flat kind of surrounding the high F. B flat and sharp five happens from time to time and sixth position F. At the end, this, these options happen a lot, and you want to practice this just to see if it's a good option for you. So if we're looking at the last five measures, I like to start the passage in fifth. Like that, sorry for the mistake. And then you practice it very slowly, very methodically to get used to the feeling. And then you're back to first position for uh, the rest of the piece playing in conventional positions for the last three bars. So that's just one option. It may not work best for you. You may be better just to do the normal positions and then you have to practice first to fifth as that's a, all over the place in that passage. Um, but regardless of which way you decide you want to try it, there's another method to practice the technique at the end, and that's to use a dotted rhythm uh, adaptation. So where you play long, short, long, short, long, short, long, or short, long, short, long, short, long. And I'll show you uh, what this seems like, a, this feels like to pick up the 37. We're going to do long, short, long. <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That 
that's another good way of working on the slide technique. Uh, and then reversing it, short, long. This is a little awkward, so it takes some practice. And yes, there's going to be some mistakes while you're learning to work this out. But then when you go back to normal, it should be pretty much a lot easier. Etc. All the way through to the end. So those are some good helpful techniques. Remember you're playing on a cushion of air that helps you feel like you're staying uh, a little bit more relaxed and at ease as the air pushes you from note to note. So enjoy practicing this. It is a lot of work. I think it's worth it. It's a fun etude to play. Once you start playing it well, it can be really fun. So enjoy. And I hope these ideas uh, will help make it a little bit easier as you practice it uh, from day to day.